Hello, good evening. This is News 360, and we're coming to you live from our studios here at Adesawe in Accra. My name is Solis Rose Corte. My name is Hisa Mone. We have the headlines for tonight coming up in a moment. News 360 headlines is brought to you by. In the headlines, President Ekufuado, in a Christmas message, pledges unflinching resolve to devote his energies to create opportunities for every Ghanaian. Scores of commuters in Accra stranded at the VIP bus terminal Sunday due to the unavailability of vehicles to transport them on Christmas Eve. Also power restored to the Ghana Trade Fair Company after supply was cut due to unpaid bills amounting to some 600,000 Ghana cities. And on mission tonight, a congestion, lack of ventilation and threats from reptiles affecting teaching and learning at the girls' dormitory of the Pandai Senior High School in the northern region. And then elsewhere on the continent, Zimbabwe's new president, Emerson Mnangagwa, appoints leader of military takeover as one of his deputies in the ruling party. Details of all these coming up right now. And in our first story tonight, President Kufuado has charged Ghanaians to unite and focus on working together to build a progressing, prosperous Ghana. Now, in his Christmas message, the president pledged his unflinching resolve to devote his energies to create opportunities for every Ghanaian. On behalf of the government, my wife Rebecca, my daughters and grandchildren, I extend warmest greetings and best wishes to all Ghanaians celebrating Christmas. We join the millions across the world in recognizing the sense of renewed hope this joyous season brings to us. As we give and receive the goodwill of Christ in this holy season, let us be mindful of the true meaning of his life on earth and especially of his greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. I therefore encourage all to remain committed to the cardinal principles of Christianity, faith, love, charity, and reconciliation. Over the last 11 months, the period of stay of my government in office, we've taken concrete steps towards stabilizing and growing our economy, providing incentives for the private sector to flourish, and ensuring that the most basic elements of social justice, i.e. access to free quality education, and healthcare are met. I believe that the measures we have put and will put in place will lead to greater and greater employment for all Ghanaians, especially the youth, and higher and higher incomes. I'm confident that the best days of Mother Ghana lie ahead. Let us stay united and focus on the things that can help us construct the road to a brighter future. For my part, I'll always be grateful to God and to you, the Ghanaian people, for giving me the opportunity to serve you. I remain committed to devoting all my energies towards helping create a free and prosperous nation of opportunities where every Ghanaian child no matter the circumstances of their birth, has a fair chance to strive for a happy and dignified life and realize their aspirations. And where we can unleash the sense of enterprise, creativity and innovation of the Ghanaian people so that together we can build a progressive, prosperous Ghana 
whose citizens live in harmony and security in fulfillment of the dreams of the founding fathers of our nation. Let us all celebrate the season safely and responsibly and remember to help those who are less fortunate than ourselves. Let each one of us do our bit to help feed those who are hungry and offer comfort to those in need. Let us take the time to gather, love, listen, and learn from each other, and to remember that with the help of God, we can overcome any challenge and achieve any future of which we can dream. I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. May God bless us all and our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. And to some international business relations, Ghana and the state of Qatar have signed a total of four economic and development partnership agreements and memoranda of understanding targeted at the aviation industry and youth and sports development. President Akufu Addo and the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, supervised the signing of the agreement and pledged to strengthen relations. The Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, who was received by President Kufuanu at the Pedwasi Lodge, was in the country on a two day working visit. The two leaders pledged to strengthen ties in the areas of energy, railways, and investment. The leaders then supervised two agreements and two memoranda of understanding. The investment promotion and protection of agreement were signed by the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Shelly Ayoko Boche, on behalf of Ghana whilst her counterpart Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman signed on behalf of Qatar. Again, the Air Service Agreement was signed by Aviation Minister Cecilia Dapa and Jassin bin Saif al-Sulati, Minister for Transport and Communications for Qatar, respectively. Youth and Sports Minister Isaac Isiyama signed the MOU on cooperation in the field of youth and sports, while Salah bin Ghanin Ali, Minister for Culture and Sports, signed for Qatar. The Amil of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, has since left the country. In other news tonight, scores of commuters in Accra were stranded at the VIP bus terminal Sunday due to unavailability of vehicles to transport them to their various towns to spend Christmas with their families. Some passengers had to wait for over four hours before getting a bus. It's 1 p.m. here at the VIP bus terminal at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle in Accra. On the eve of Christmas, it expected that the number of travellers would increase. Conversely, it appears little or no measures were put in place to address the situation. Almost getting to five hours. What they are telling us is there's a shortage of buses at the moment and that you know, when the drivers come, because they are tired now, they have to wait and at least rest for about 10 minutes before the bus can convey us. And so most of the drivers, when they are overtired, they, they tell you they won't go. And for that matter, we have to have patience. So when the bus is coming, then they will start giving us the tickets. Most of the affected passengers were traveling to the Ashanti and Bunahafu regions. These passengers who are fortunate to have a bus are those who have been here as early as 9 a.m. I've been here for so long, since morning. I was in the queue and then I just got to my turn. I just took my ticket and I'm about to leave. <laughs> Tickets have been issued to passengers to occupy three buses, but they are yet to move. At the Intercity STC transport yard, the situation was worse. The yard was virtually empty. The only bus available was almost full. On a normal Sunday, only four trips would be made to Kumase, but as at midday, nine trips had been made already. It is likely the numbers would increase only if buses are made available. Just last Friday, how many buses moved? We did, from here we did, uh, we did 18. 18. 18. And is that the norm? No. How many buses move on the normal Friday? Uh, normal Friday, we, we run around 12 and 13. 
12 and 13, yes. meaning because of the festive season, sure. it's increased. Sure. Sure. Yesterday, how many buses moved? We did 16. 16. And the normal Saturday, is that how it is? No. no. How many? Normal Saturday, it, it falls to 12 and 11. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, or unfortunately, Bupi, Yapi are off. So we had more buses to support our operations. The company is expected to receive more buses in the coming months to resolve such problems in the future. Livestock patrons in Kumase are paying more for goats and sheep this Christmas as dealers have hiked the cost of their products. The dealers say the high exchange rates of the city to the CFA and extortion at checkpoints along the transport routes are factors adversely affecting their business. A report by Benjamin Adu. Sheep, goat and cattle are often in high demand during festive seasons like Christmas. But a visit to the livestock market at Dagomba Line in Kumasi revealed their pens were almost empty. With few animals around, the cost of livestock keeps rising. Prices of livestock, which used to reach from 100 cities to 4,000 cities, are now pegged around 170 cities to 8,000 cities. This has slowed patronage of the market. Most of the livestock dealers take delivery of their animals from Burkina Faso. They are worried at the high exchange rate between the city and CFA and the impact on their business. Due to the high exchange rate, we started making losses. That is what has affected the business. Once the CFA gains strength over the city, the additional cost is now transferred onto the consumer, so we can recoup our money and transportation back. The livestock dealers are also unhappy with what they term as extortion from the security agencies at various checkpoints. Extortions by the police is also not helping the situation. In 2016, the whole place was filled with livestock, but now business is slow. With the cost of livestock shooting up, patronage of chicken as substitute is expected to increase this festive season. Right, let's talk some more about Christmas and security on Christmas Day is expected to be taken a notch higher. Police commanders in all 10 regions have deployed uniformed and plain clothes personnel to maintain law and order. While security personnel will protect the citizenry from robbers and miscreants, it is expected that the general public will also be security conscious to protect life and property. On the phone line right now is the Director General of Police Public Affairs Directorate, ACP David Eklu, to tell us more. Good evening, ACP, and thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank, thank you. Good evening. Yeah. May I also take the opportunity to wish you a Merry Christmas? Right. We don't expect you to tell us your strategy, but how prepared are the police for Christmas Day, knowing that a lot of you know, thieves or bad people take a, try to take advantage of the situation? Uh, thank you. Um, we have already announced and outlined our law enforcement strategy mm. about three weeks ago, mm. both at the head, from the national level and then in all the 11 police regions. Mm. And our focus, one, is to make police visible on the highways. The second one is to increase police visibility and monitoring at commercial centers and also keep police presence in residential areas and other areas that we have identified as targets where criminals normally operate during this uh, festive occasion. Tomorrow will be Christmas. But for the past week and over the weekend, uh, things have been generally calm. We have not recorded any major incidents except for some cases of stealing and a few cases of robbery. But generally, the police are there, and they are also found at all the, intersection, uh, the major inter mm. traffic intersections and major public places. And uh, I am very certain that with the strategy that we have in place, we should be able to go through the Christmas from tomorrow, during the holidays, and uh, even the New Year and beyond. Right. In recent past, we have seen a lot of people 
stealing police uniforms and parading themselves as policemen, how can the public identify such fake policemen, if I should put it that way? Yes, one of the things that you need to identify any police officer is the uniform. And then the police badge or the name tag. Mm. And all police officers who are deployed now are in mass vehicles. Mm. They, are, they don't operate as individuals, they operate in a group. So that if the, the, the other step that you can identify a fake policeman is, if you are you for a traffic offense and says that let's settle it on the street, then you should be, you should be suspicious and know that that police officer is not a, a professional police officer. So those are the things that we need, uh, we need the public to know. The uniform, the name tag, the vehicle that they are going to use, and they don't operate as individuals. They always operate as a team, with a team leader. It all across all the intersections and places that we have uh, outlined. Mm. There have been occasions when the, 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 the police emergency lines are not picked when they are called by the general public. Are, there, are your phone lines active right now? Have you received any call about our phone lines not being active? Because last week we, mm. we activated our emergency command centers in mm. Accra, Kumasi, and Tamale. Mm. So we, have, we did announce that with the, the, the current center that we have, we can take more than 100 calls at a time. And mm. the other thing is that with the new system that we have, the calls that we have, can the call, there's a caller ID system, and then the callers can connect with the patrol officers in all the areas that we have soon. Mm. So there is an improved, mass improvement in our emergency system, and I am yet to receive any complaint that our calls are not going to, because it's mm. now more expanded, mm. and it is more visible, and the, mm. the control room can even monitor the patrol mm. officers around a certain area where the emergency call is emerging from. Mm. So should we sleep or it should be one eye open just in case? Hello? I'm, I'm asking if you think the police is on top of the security issues, so we should be comfortable. We should sleep and close both eyes or it should be one eye open just in case anything yeah. happens. Yeah, thank you for asking, but personal security is key. Good. It doesn't mean that because the police are around you should, uh, you know, ignore certain basic things that you need to do at your home or when you're out there shopping. So those are the areas that we think uh, we advise strongly that you should also focus on, especially when you're out there shopping. You must plan your route well. You must know where you shop. You don't display a lot of cash. And if it is possible, possible, use the online transaction system in terms of the mobile phone network and don't carry a lot of cash around. If you have to carry it, Look for a secure lo location, you do your shopping, and then you put your drive home. Also, at your home, make sure that your room, your uh, surroundings, your home are well lit. You have good relations with your neighbors, and make sure that if you have bushy areas, and, uh, please cut those uh, uh, bushes so that your place can be well uh, 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 visible. If anything is happening around your area, some people can spot bad house around. Keep your doors closely look your your windows and areas that are very soft targets normally for people have been breaking to homes the windows your kitchens and other areas you need to secure them carefully during this christmas or, and even beyond all right we are grateful for your time acp david eklu of police public affairs directorate Let's still do some stories regarding the Christmas season and a number of expired products on the market during festive seasons in the Western region has reduced drastically. This is according to the Western Regional Zonal Officer of the Food and Drugs Authority, Abu Sumaila. Um, he, this is, he says this is as a result of the routine market surveillance in the region. Irama Smith reports. Christmas is enthusiastically celebrated by many Guineans, resulting in massive purchases of consumables. It is around this period that some bad traders unleash expired products onto the markets to unsuspecting customers. Canned foods and beverages are the products mostly released onto the markets. The Western Regional Zonal Officer of the Food and Drugs Authority, Abu Sumaila, however, says the trend has improved tremendously this year, noting cases of expired products have gone down. We engaged them, we did a lot of public education, some training, and it's yielding fruit. Abu Smaila is cautioning the general public to avoid rusted canned products. When you are buying, make sure that you look for best before or expiry. But it is around this time that people will try to 
delete or change the expiry date of the product. So if you see any form of tempering, please, you can report to us. You're on News 360. Two other stories tonight. The plight of the Catholic hospital in Bato in the Volta region continues to worsen as the number of babies born prematurely may die because of lack of baby-friendly equipment in the hospital. The hospital has struggled to acquire the equipment. Beautiful on the outside, but the inside is deplorable. 200 deliveries are recorded every month. But the facility has only two incubators. These were donated to the hospital by Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa, MP for Notong, after several lamentations from officials and mothers. To make up for the number of incubators, the facility improvises. We improvise onion bulbs, which we have I had designed in a table, a research station table for me. We put them under. We have something like a warmer. It's like a hot water bottle type of warmer, which we plug. But it's only one. And it's not, <laughs> it's not enough again. So when that happens, then that poor baby will end up with just blankets. And hypothermia is a major cause of mortality in our preterms. The hospital has no kangaroo mother care area to protect preterm babies. The children's ward is also not child friendly. Philanthropists keep the facility running but this is not enough. A friend of mine uh, mentioned it to me that um, Bata Hospital needs help. And when I came here, I realized that um, I, he even underestimated what they really need. Um, you realize that till um, Honorable Kujito came here, we, they gave them two incubators. There was, they didn't have anything and they have to improvise, meaning that um, a child could easily die. The hospital has only one pediatrician taking care of all complicated cases in the catchment area. The hospital lacks beds. Mothers sleep on the bare floor, either on a mat or cloth. Washrooms are in a very bad state. The toilet facility has to be used for weeks before it can be flushed. Patients risk infections. To attract support, the medical officer in charge organizes get-togethers. She was worried the increasing number of preterm babies at the hospital calls for a major push to reduce deaths if Ghana wants to reach the global goal to end all preventable newborn and child deaths by 2030. You know, until you are 10, your lungs are not, or 34 completed weeks for that matter, you are not, your lungs are not fully matured. So, I mean, that is a problem by itself with the preterm. And then, their subcutaneous tissue is also not enough, so they can easily get cold, and that cold can kill them. Now away from health, power has been restored to the Ghana Trade Fair Company after it was cut off due to unpaid bills. The Ghana Trade Fair Company was indebted to the ECG to the tune of 600,000 Ghana cities. The trade fair land at La, a suburb of Accra, was acquired by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah by legislative instruments 1960. Construction of the center commenced in 1962 for the first international fair proposed for February 1966 but was postponed to February 1967. Since 2015 to mid-December this year, the state-owned enterprise was without power supply from ECG and was operating on a power plant. Dr. Agnes Edu took over in July this year as the CEO and put in place a 90-day plan to raise revenue and to get the power reconnected. In the first five days of the plan, the trade fair company managed to collect 100,000 CDs from defaulting tenants. The arrears were in excess of 600,000 the day I walked in. Uh, a good 400,000 Ghana CDs of it was not Ghana trade fair's bill. It was the tenant's bill and they have fallen into arrears. But in the books of ECG, they can't go after the tenants individually because the bill is in the name of Ghana Trade Fair Company Limited. The tenants have been taken off the sole meter and the ECG is to provide a separate meter for each tenant. 
The trade fair is a pale shadow of itself as most of the structures there have outlived their usefulness and are in bastard. Some works are ongoing at the Round Pavilion and a space behind it by Fantasy Entertainment Limited. The venue will host the fair from February 28 to March 7, 2018 with some 600 exhibitors expected to attend. It will focus on the government's initiative of One District, One Factory program. I have the support of the staff and we are aggressively, we have launched it about a month ago. We are in the registration phase. We will highlight all 216 districts here as part uh, of the international fair. CEO of the trade fair company Dr. Agnes Edu indicated her plan is to redevelop the over 200 acre land in the next five years. We are the vehicle through which government can promote trade and industry, products and services. The core uh, anchor project of what we want to do here will be a proper convention center. In the end, there will be a mixed use, a multi-purpose mixed use facility here. The company will be conducting security auditing and ensure that the place is well led to provide the necessary protection within and outside the walls of the trade fair site. Now, the Ghana Journalist Association has condemned the attack on journalists at the NPP headquarters during a coverage of a protest by members of the Elembele constituency. The association calling on the leadership, the association is calling on the leadership of the party to bring the culprits to book to demonstrate the abhorrence of such acts. Now, on Thursday, December 21, journalists from TV3, City FM, and Ghana Web were allegedly assaulted by security personnel of by security persons of the New Patriotic Party at the party's headquarters in Accra. The journalists had gone there to cover a protest staged by the NPP supporters from the Elembele constituency in the Western region on matters relating to the party's national elections early next year. According to the association, after carefully investigating the matter, the GJA condemns the attack on the innocent journalist. Right, joining us on the phone now is uh, Edmond Kofiaba, he's the General Secretary of the Ghana Journalists Association. Edmond, good evening, if you can hear me. Hello, Kofiaba, can you hear me? Yes, please, I can hear you, and, 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 and good evening to you, and may I use this opportunity to say an official part to them. We see him. Thank you, Kofiaba. I'm sure the tone of the press release spells everything out that the GJA is not happy about this attack. What else can you tell us? Yes, um, we are not very happy about the incident because um, it is becoming one too many. And there's a growing culture of impunity, which we think should, should come to an end. Mm. And so we are, um, apart from condemning the action, we, we are also calling on the leadership of the NPP to, to bring the, the copies to book. And, and that is the only way we will believe that indeed um, uh, they also are, are, are not in, in support of such action. Um, if if they, they, they should bring the copies to book, and then what, what next? Well, if if we we see that an action has been taken against the people who who acted in such manner, yeah. then it will it will even assuage the pain of the of the victims involved. Yeah. So what we are asking for is that the the leadership of the MTP must demonstrate um, commitment towards ensuring that this culture of impunity comes to an end. Mm. So, uh, Kofi, do, do you think it would be right to suggest to you that the leadership of the GJA should engage political party to speak to their supporters about such attacks on journalists? Yeah, it, it would be, it, it would be a, a, a good thing to do, and al al already we've started a discussion on mm. that thing, that mm. um, there will be the need to have a formal engagement with the various political parties to let them understand that um, the media play a, a key role 
in the, in the, in the political discourse. And so they must consider the media as, as, as partners in whatever they are doing. Mm. And, and so there, there's that conversation already going on out there. And I believe in the coming few days, we will hear more about that. Would you be surprised to hear that some journalists want to take this matter to the court because it's a case of an assault? Yeah, it is, it is a case of an assault. And in such matters, um, hmm. one, the, the, the individuals um, affected by, by it can take um, legal action. The, yeah. the media houses also can take an action. And the GJ as a, as a body cannot take an action. Already we started um, a discussion around trying to and get a team of lawyers who mm. who may be on on standby to, to take up such issues it can be okay because we are thinking that um, mm. it is getting to the point where we need to go beyond just mere condemnation of such such actions and right, right, and, so. and actually um and take the necessary steps to to um assuage the the damage caused to to the persons involved. Right. Thank you very much. Edmund Kovia is the general secretary of yeah, the Ghana okay. Journalist Association. You're still tuned in to News 360 here on TV3. It's now time for Mission. Don't forget that it's proudly supported by Star Ghana with funding from Danida, UK Aid and the European Union. Let's start off Mission tonight from the education sector and congestion, lack of ventilation and constant threats of reptiles and rodents are scenes that greet any visitor at the girls' dormitory of the Pandai Senior High School in the Pandai district of the North in region. The school authorities have been compelled to convert classrooms into dormitories due to the abandoned dormitory projects started some few years ago. Bandai is one of the deprived and isolated districts with some of the worst road networks in the northern region. The district can't boast of a single tarred road with about 95% of communities lacking all the basic amenities for human development. Bandai Senior High School, formerly the training facility for their Greek ministry, is the only secondary school serving the district and beyond and has a population of 1,171. But the school has not seen any major renovation since it was converted into a second cycle institution in 1992. Due to the increasing number of students and lack of expansion over the years, existing facilities are facing collapse. Immediate attention we need to give to Pansec is to look at our accommodation problem. Fortunately, we are told there are two projects going on. A 24-room boys dormitory, which is a story building, is at the roofing stage. It was started from the records 2014 and left at that stage. We have a dormitory block for girls. That one is being roofed and probably just needs a bit of effort to fix it. So certainly the dormitory situation is a concern that we would want all who matter to hear and not only hear but to act to salvage the situation of Bandai Senior High School. But the intriguing thing that caught the attention of the news team was the manner, the place, and how students were served their breakfast. Mm -hmm. 
the privileged few bought some additions to go with the dry rice water. The team then visited the girls' dormitory. The scene here is not conducive for human habitation. Madame Kasim Aisha is the girl's house mistress. This is a human institution and you know they come from different backgrounds. Uh, some are well trained, others to a different story. So in as much as some are trying to keep the place tidy, others too are not giving them the opportunity to. So one will sweep, the other will come and throw rubbish around. Because they, are, they have limited um, toilet facility, they prefer going to the bush. So most of them visit the bush. That's a free range system, uh, which is having a lot of health implications. This development made the team curious and decided to return later in the evening. The team arrived during prep time and in some two hours, signaling the end of prep and ending all activities for the day. But what caught our attention next was even more devastating. The congestion in this room tells us about the challenges the students go through. After having their prep, they're here to rest, but it's not comfortable because the heat alone here for me is something else. But what is more challenging and what is more sad is their colleagues who are out there sleeping, exposing themselves to other dangers, reptiles and mosquito bite which at the end of the day can result in some challenges as well, which will bring them some difficulties. This is a price they have to pay for attaining education. It is a sad situation for them. The situation was more serious at the girls' dormitory. Here, the ladies sleep in twos and they have mosquito nets. The level of ventilation is poor and with a mosquito net and poor ventilation, just imagine how hot this place will be. I'm already sweating. I just came in for about a few minutes. So it tells you the challenges these ladies go through. Here at the main girls dormitory, over 40 girls are crammed into this small space due to lack of adequate rooms. You be in a room and normally you find a reptile in the dormitory and the girls you know you normally become scared and then when that happens you fear to go back to where you saw that and to sleep and we normally see scorpions too so it's endangering our lives it affects our learning because for instance if i see a snake on my bed or under my bed for today if i go to class i may not learn as the way I suppose to learn because I'm afraid that when I come back to sleep after preps, maybe there is a possibility that there will be other snakes under the bed. Situations like these clearly hampers various effort by stakeholders in education across the world in realizing the MDGs on education, especially the girl child. From Pandai, Nana Kweku Edia for TV3 News. Now, and to help us further interrogate this issue on the phone lines right now is Matthew Nyendam. He is the Member of Parliament for Pandai in the Northern Region. Good evening, sir. Many thanks for joining us. Good evening, my sister. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Um, first of all, how long have you known about the situation at the Pandai Senior High School? Well, let me say good evening to your, your viewers and good evening to your people and Merry Christmas too. Let me also use the opportunity to thank TV3 for using your airtime at this time to highlight the challenges confronting Bandai Senior High School. Now back to your question. I, I've been a member of parliament for the past four years. This is my second term. And ever since I've become a member of parliament, I've, I've lived with these challenges. So 
I'm fully aware of what is going on. And I've made several efforts to solve the problems that we currently have in Bandai. And so far, it has not changed much. So if you ask when, 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 when did I get to know of this problem, I've, I've known for a very long time. And I have forced the contractors, especially the, the, the ladies or the guest dormitory that the headmaster mentioned about. There is, a, there is a contractor called Business. He got the project. And I followed him, I have followed him, I have called him. I cannot even count. I have to take him from Fandai to Accra to be able to get some money for him to do the roofing. And for almost two years now, he has never picked my call. I have tried and got tired. The story building that, uh, that you also highlighted on, is supposed to be awarded to the Mr. Mr. Zoka, that is the NBC uh, regional chairman. And ever since we took over, I have called him several times. I've asked him to come and do the job because if you begin to advocate for his change now, people will begin to ruin so many politics into it. But I think that uh, he's our man. He's an NDC man. It doesn't matter. He's a Ghanaian. And if he has, a, he, has a, he, has a, he has got a contract to work on, what I need from him is to make sure that the project is completed because that is what the people need. But the bottom line is that I blame the consultants and then the engineers, they are supposed to be those responsible to report to the, the, the to Accra or the head office about the ongoing project. But unfortunately, the engineers and the consultants are not also doing so because these projects have been come a standstill for almost two, four years now. And as a member of parliament and the DC, we follow them. I keep calling them, but unfortunately, the story is what we are seeing. Um, Honorable, from what you're saying, it sounds like you're trying to say that your hands are tied and you can do absolutely nothing about it. Is that my the case? My hands are not tied, but my sister, I am a member of parliament. I represent the people. What I need to do is to make sure that I'm able to beg, lobby, and get some of these projects mm. to the area. But the one who awards the contract is the government. And I, like I said, I blame the consultants because they are supposed to be the eye. They are supposed to make sure that some of these works are completed and completed on time. You call the, the contractors, you talk to them, and the people are not on site. And the consultants that are supposed to write officially to either advocate for a termination or a continuity, they are not also writing. Um, have there been any processes towards legal action? to be taken against the consultants and, of course, the, the contractors. <laughs> My sister, mm. I haven't got into that area. Uh, there's not been any legal actions against them. Do I you plan on doing action. that? Is, is that in the pipeline? Is this something you, con you will consider doing, considering no, what, what, the situation? What I, think I, sh I should be doing is to make sure that maybe I um, get the head office to terminate the contract and re award it to people who are willing to do the job. Because if you look at business, for instance, I've crossed it with get fund and I'm reliably told that they don't owe him. They paid him his money. So if they paid you up to where you have done, what stops you from completing the job so that you can go for your last money? Well, with Azoka, I spoke to Azoka not less than two months ago and he promised me he was going to do get to site very as soon as possible. And up to date he has not gone to site. So what I need to do is to report to get fund that this man is not doing the job, re award, terminate the project, and re award it to somebody who has a financial model or who has the willing to do it, and the person will do it. But legal, legally, I have not thought about that one. So, so what, what you're talking about, probably re awarding the contract to someone else. But right now, the ones who already have the contract, you, it seems they can't be made to do what they're supposed to do. What's the guarantee that the next person who comes for the next contract can be made to do the right thing? This is, this is not the first time contracts are going to be cancelled and re-awarded. Mm. Sometimes, some of, it depends on how somebody gets a contract. Mm. Some are politically awarded. The person may not have the financial model to be able to execute the project. So if, they, if, if, if the consultants, like I said, have done their work diligently, they should be able to advise, uh, uh, get fund appropriately, that this contractor mm -hmm. is not having the financial model or is refusing to do it. And when there's pressure on that contractor, even if they need, they need for him to go and borrow and come and do it, he right, has to sir. go and borrow and do it. But if he realizes that the contract is cancelled and mm. re-awarded to somebody who has a financial model to do it, okay. I, I can assure you that my sister, 
it wouldn't take long. Some of these projects will be completed. All right. Thank you very much, sir, for making time for us this evening. I've been speaking with the MP for Pandai, Mr. Matthew Nyendam. And we've been talking about the situation at the Pandai Senior High School in the northern region. The deplorable situation there. 40 girls sleeping in one room. Not necessarily the type of situation you would want your child to be going through. And uh, don't forget that mission has been brought to you by um, Star Ghana that then funded by Danida UK Aid and the European Union. We'll be right back after this. Good evening and thanks for staying with us on News 360. My name is Anako Jafre with a sports update. Let's get into the details on how to folk played out a goalless draw with Asante Kotoko in the return leg to win the Ghana at 60 years. And now to some news making rounds in the entertainment industry. It was a day of honor for dancehall star Stoneboy as he launched his third album, Epistles of Mama, at a concert graced by giant musicians including Rocky Dawoni and Samini. A high point of the 2017 Beam concert was when Stoneboy and his mentor Samini lyrically relived their try moments in 2008. Also Rise report. December 22, 2017 will go down as one of the happiest days in the life of Afro dancehall superstar Stoneboy. The ninth birth the hitmaker's third album, Epistles of Mama, a project in honor of his late mother, Catherine Satekla. It was an emotional moment as Stoneboy performed Mama, a song that celebrates the only woman who believed in his dream and inspired his breakthrough. The sold-out concert saw the charged Beam natives sing along to songs on a 24-track album released just a fortnight ago. 2016 Grammy nominee and acclaimed reggae star Rocky Dawuni made a surprise appearance to support Stoneboy. He's hardworking, he's humble, you know, he's writing great music. You know, I have to be here to support because it's all about, it's a movement of Ghanaian music. In 2008, Stoneboy, then an underground artist, met Samini, a man who later mentored and influenced his rise. The two relieved some of their toughest moments in a performance. Stoneboy was full of praise for Samini for his priceless mentorship. That was a high point of the concert, and Samini couldn't help than to speak into Stoneboy's life. The sky is an understatement if you say that's the limit for Stoneboy. So, um, higher heights. I know this is just a beginning for Stoneboy, you know. I did on News 360, and that's about it. But let's talk yeah. about security. Around Christmas, we interviewed the security, uh, the, the, the police directorate, public affairs officer on security. And I said, hey, don't leave your spare shoes, nice ones, in the car. It can be seen. I am Robert. One CD, your spare bag, laptops, iPads, all those things. Don't leave them at the back of your car. Just because put them at home when you're going out and take what you can afford to carry in your bag. So this And speaking of home, you mm. have to make sure that when you're going for the all nights, buckle mm. up. Just make sure you lock up everything or at least leave someone at home because that is a time that they Absolutely. come into your house because they know there's no one at home. And on that note, we wish you all 
A Merry Christmas. Indeed. My name is Solis Rose Corte. <laughs> Many thanks for watching. I am Isa Mani. Have a wonderful evening.